This is pretty awesome. things in life are as good as coffee out in the middle of nowhere, out in the middle of nature. With the view to boot, I can actually see Mount Fry right now. But, uh, the views will be on and off all day. It rained all night long. On the plus side, it is not raining right now. On the con side, yeah, I could not have a fairly obstructed view day today. Oh well. So I gotta make a commentary on my new Volt 2 tent. And that is that I wish the rain tarp was just a few inches longer. Look what happens from when the rain hits the dirt. All right. Now that is going into my backpack. And this guy has a Volt 3. Same thing. All right, his is even worse. Just a few more inches of rain, I don't know, tarp, whatever you want to call this, would fix that, I think. Oh well. So this site does have a green throne and a nice little touch. We have a little white chain that you can hang up across the trail just to show that it's being used. This is clearly the site of an old green throne. All right, time for my morning business. Get the footprint. <laughs> yeah. This is with a footprint, Volt 2. That's without a footprint, Volt 3. <laughs> <laughs> Always have a good look at your site before you leave. All it takes is just turn around and do a quick look around. You don't have any sunglasses hanging around. You didn't set anything out to dry. Yeah. Not bad. At least I'm getting occasional views of it. Gives me hope. Well, to say I'm taking my sweet time is an understatement. It is 11.30. I took a nice leisurely pack up. That's for damn sure. Uh, I was showing myself looking around that site. All that other stuff was uh, the guy beside me, the guy with the Volt 3. And then he just kind of showed up at the last second and it's like, whoops, I'm making a video with you here. That's all right. There was uh, four sites there. The other three were all occupied, but they're all going back today. So we'll see uh, if I run into people up here. I think there is, according to them anyway, there is more people up here, so. It's just a 10 kilometer day, but I'm attacking the head wall. The uh, word that that guy used for the head wall was treacherous when it's wet. So 
I am very happy that I brought along my ice cleats now, my crampons. I will definitely use them on something called treacherous. All right. Trail does kind of a slow climb right out of the gate and this maintenance seems to have come to a halt. Because one, there's two, behind it there's three, three trees. All pretty much the succession, so. It was pretty cleared up to, uh, whew, up to Lower Fry it. I think that's a popular campground, so. Hey, this is gonna go down from here on. Well, I'm taking my first break on a hillside and it's raining. So yesterday when I first got going, I found that this thing leaks now. It's a problem I saw in uh, Hawaii, but I gave it a bit of a pass because I figured it was just due to great cold water getting warmer and expanding. But So what I have to do, I figured out is this guy here, it will completely shut it off, right? So I can't just drink out of it and let it go and it automatically shuts off anymore because now that's starting to fail. So open it up, there you go. You saw it squirt a little bit and now it might drip, drip, drip. All day long yesterday it was dripping on me a bit. So now I just have to two hand it. In this case, I'm gonna do it with one and close it up like that, it won't drip anymore. So, hey, you know, a little bit more trouble but I can keep using it and I'm not worried about it dripping anymore so you know do what you can right work with it it's too bad we're not hiking along that creek sounds like a raging torrent right now and I got a nice view of Mount Friar from here and I better take advantage of any view I can get I'm happy to say that the rain only lasted about 15 minutes all right still climbing up we go. A lot of rain equals a lot of mud. You have to dance around, right? You get the occasional views of Fry it though. Not very often, but sometimes. It's a pretty wicked mountain. Can't believe I'm gonna climb. I'm gonna try and get around this thing over there. All right. How can I not put a perfect spot to take a rest on camera? That's all I can say. Trail hasn't been climbing too hard lately. I'm hoping I'm mostly done that. Well, at least until Brussels anyway. Well, the climb mostly was done at that nice little rest spot. Came down a little bit, but not much. Mostly the Friat Creek came up to meet us so uh, the bridge across this creek the second bridge is in a few hundred meters and then I'll have kind of finished off the first little first little milestone of today all right this means that I have uh, banged off 4.1 I believe kilometers of the trail today It's a little creepy, I won't lie. Awesome. Okay. Not bad. Now it's starting to get some views. You can see the big uh, waterfall down there, at least I can. And I can also see a lot of crap coming at me. Well. I kind of knew that, right? I came out here with this sort of forecast, but hey, you know, you can't let the weather scare you off every time. 
Just come out and hope for the best. Well, this would be really awesome. Just wanted to show you guys that. I'm hiking in the rain. The views are kind of obstructed, but you know. Gotta show what this hike looks like, right? Over there is Mount Belange somewhere, but I couldn't tell you. Can't see. Yeah, this is very nice in here. It's just nice and straight. I'm loving it. Well, my view is getting more and more clearer. I'm pretty happy about that. I'm not even sure if either of these are right. <laughs> I just don't know what I'm going, what I'm doing. It's getting nice up there, you can see a little better. All right. Well, a passing group told me that the headwall campground isn't at the top, it's at the bottom. And it appears I read the literature wrong and they are correct, so. That sucks. I wanted to uh, do the head wall today before I went and attacked the coal. Oh well. So you do have to rock off sometimes on this section, right? This is the worst one. And it's not too, too bad. We've been getting boatloads of rain, so this is probably high. Anyway. I have these great boots that are pretty much waterproof until the water comes right over the lips, so it certainly does help a lot. You are guided by piles of rocks and nook shooks and stuff like that, right? So here's a pile of rocks. And over there you can see the nook shook. Now you can see I've made it to Brussels campground. I took top of that and made a bench out of it. That's kind of neat. And they got some bear, bear boxes that they're about to get all set up. I've had some nice views. Nice views. Well, improper planning. Now I wish I had gotten, I had paid for a spot and uh, at the Sydney Valence hut. And I could go do the head wall today. I would have had to go into Jasper, I think, and pick up a key. Or I don't know if there's an Alpine Club of Canada in Calgary or what, but I would have had to do something like that. Then I just didn't have time to do Jack. I couldn't have driven to, well, maybe I'd have got away with it. But the fact that I, I hammered out that 11.6 kilometers pretty fast, maybe I could have done it, but. And there's a part of me that wants to just go up to the, go up there and camp wherever, but, well, I don't want to be totally disrespectful of everything, right? So, now I got less than four kilometers to go to the bottom of the head wall where the head wall campground is, and that's it for my day. Oh well, learn from my mistakes. Okay, well, on we go. Well, it's a bit far away, but you do see some cool falls. Once you leave Brussels, you start climbing. Gotta climb up over this. I have more to climb. This view will get better, but you can see that's coming in. This is the view I'm referring to. So I better get it on camera now. Before a bunch of white mist sweeps in. This is awesome. Brussels is just about here-ish. Let's start climbing up this guy. What a wicked shot. Even with the clouds over those mountains, this is still a wicked shot. 
Well, this is the big nook shook, cairn, pile of rocks, whatever you want to call it, you see from down there. There's just waterfalls and stuff all over the place, man. That's this really neat little weeping wall. All right, little wall waterfall. And we're here. And then this is the one I'm starting to get a shot of that's advertised in the big headwall waterfall. Not bad, you know. This is, hasn't hit me yet. Maybe it won't, maybe it will. It's starting to move its way down the valley. It took 16 kilometers to break out of the trees and make this fun, but it is. It is. Well, this is not a pile of rocks or a nook shook or a cairn or any of that. This is a wall. And these are freaking gates. Holy crap, it's huge. This is like up to my nose. I'm 5'11". This one too. And damn, they're huge. They're the biggest ones I've ever seen. And lo and behold, Fright Lake. And look at that wicked hue of blue. Pretty sweet. More rock topping. It's been raining and raining and raining, so this is probably more than it's usually here. Anyway, let me get a good grip on this. Was clumsier than it should have been but that's what happens when you're holding a phone at the same time as you're doing it pretty awesome well, I'm taking a break in this pristine spot I have absolutely no hurry I have a few kilometers to go I yeah <laughs> I will just enjoy myself. Hiking alongside a lake can get pretty rocky and rooty. This is actually a pretty good part of it. But it's pretty delightful, all right? It's such an awesome lake. It's too bad it's raining again, but whatever. Another cool waterfall. Yeah. This guy here is to show if anyone brings a canoe or anything up here, shows them where they should get off. Well, that would be pretty awesome if it wasn't for the usual stuff. Yeah. The lake was pretty delightful. According to the books now, I climbed through the forest until I hit uh, Headwall Campground. That is awesome. What a sweet little bowl in here. And here's the campground. This is a cool place. I don't know why everyone's talking crap about it. I mean, okay, so there's supposed to be like one broken down picnic table, so what? What a cool waterfall. Well, I can see why there is a uh, they talk about that. The spots are in pretty bad shape. This is the best one I could find. He's got one up there. There's a few others, but they're pretty beat up. Um, but the location, you know, I mean, Skyline has got some excellent, well taken care of camp spots. No, you can't see anything out of them. You got no view or no nothing. There's a lot of mosquitoes too. Anyway, I want to get this thing up and let it dry out at least a little bit before I lose all the all semblance of heat. 
I'm just happy to have a picnic table. Tomorrow night, if I make it over the pass, over the coal, I'm gonna have nothing. I'm just gonna be doing whatever. This one over here is a little more beat up. All right, it's kind of kind of unusable now. But you know. It's all right. We uh there's another occupant here. And the two of us sat underneath these trees while it rained and basically didn't feel it. So I'm not going to complain about that. Well, I came for a little side hike. This is about as clear as I've seen that. But uh, I think you can guess what's here. This is pretty awesome. You gotta climb up a ways from uh, from the campground down there. But it's, uh, yeah. I think it's a worthy little night hike. We'll uh, come check it out. That is awesome. Going back to this semi trail. In order to get to the falls, you know, the trail is pretty much just, you go straight instead of heading up to the rock, the head wall. And then once you get here, you just start running way up these rocks, up the roar. It's uh, not rocket science. Yeah. That was pretty awesome. Totally worth a little hike, gotta say. I don't understand the parks sometimes, so. There's a triple barrel toilet here. Those have to be changed out with helicopters. I wouldn't give, like, I just don't get it. This is the least used of these three campgrounds. I wouldn't give a crap about how the parks spend their money, except there are bridges that they are not building, which are preventing hikes from being done at all, like period. Anyway, I do want to put this on camera. You know what I want to do? I want to hike a jar of pickles 21 kilometers away from civilization and then just leave them there. Oh my. Yeah, I wonder what the story is behind that. Well, it's pretty early, but I'm going to bed. I'm gonna go dip my feet in the water first, of course. Tomorrow I got big ambitions, but I also have to be very prepared that I might get turned back. I might be coming right back here, or uh, lower than this anyway. But if uh, worse comes to worse, I will have explored, fry, explored Friat Valley. I mean, I did a Geraldine Valley two years ago, so if I don't get right over the coal and over to that valley, not the end of the world, right? Still been a fun backpack. All right, good night. See you tomorrow.